AM 590 KXSP Omaha's ESPN Radio. Pull them belts tight, because it's time for the front stretch. Presented by Kosiski Auto Parts at 50th and I Street. Well, it's another beautiful Sunday in the Metro. Hope you're done digging yourself out. When we recorded this show on Thursday night, sounds like there might be more rain or more snow coming for us on Tuesday, so you might be putting those shovels away a little bit soon. I just love this snow. I'm I'm just so excited. It almost gets me as excited as going to a dirt track race. <laughs> Joe, when we have major snowstorms come through the Midwest, do you see a quick spike in business through Kaziski Auto Parts? No, we lost money being open today. I can imagine because yes. because everyone no, kind of well, shut down. Maybe, maybe today, but when you take the next week with the snowstorms and the wrecks and people <laughs> needing body parts and stuff like that for their cars, I would say we're going to see a spike. Yeah. But when I woke up this morning, I told my wife, I hate this white stuff so much. I could move to a country that never had white snow again. Any part of the country, I just hate it. Yeah. I l- I love it. I oh god, I just love. I mean, I it, it's, it's it brings out the kid in me. I got up this morning at eight a.m. I couldn't wait to. Tromp through the snow and get my snowblower out. And I worked on four different driveways in my neighborhood, all the sidewalks. I used like a tank of gas in my snowblower. And I'm just chucking right along like I'm I'm going to school for the first time when I'm a little kid. It was- I see the white stuff. I get all excited. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, I need one extra blanket, the TV remote. I'm just going to stay inside and enjoy my furnace. Well, you guys should have been at Kaziski Auto Parts this morning because when it snows like that, we've got to clean all the paths to try to get to the cars. We can't oh. get to the parts. And I just asked I mean, you it last just week, goes yeah. That. So much more work than what you can believe. I mean, we it, it'll cost me, I don't know how many dollars today just to get all that extra stuff done, I'll bet, you know? I'll bet. But I saw the Carmageddon that was on the interstate, and apparently people don't understand. 50-mile-an-hour wind gusts, snowstorm and blizzard, it might be best to hunker down and not go anywhere, especially on the interstate when people are driving 60, They still have Christmas miles an hour. presents to get. Oh, my God. It's just, uh, as soon as, it, I mean, I... I got home at 3 o'clock yesterday, uh, Wednesday afternoon. I locked down. I, you just I, talked about how, oh my God, I'm going to go get me a tank well, of gas in my well, snowblower. I, I'm going to go play You know what snow. I done yesterday when it started snowing? We had our salvage yard in Sioux City, and I had to take off and leave Omaha at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's snowing here. We <laughs> right, got about an inch. Of of, and I yeah. got to drive to Sioux City for our Christmas party last night. <laughs> Did and you guys still have the Christmas party? We still had the Christmas I party if last it didn't night. Get canceled. And we come back, and me and my wife drove back, and we got home about 11 o'clock, and it was. Not the nicest weather, but you know what? It wasn't as bad as what they were making it. Listen, it's amazing. This happens every year in the metro. The first snow, people seem to forget how to drive in the weather. Amen. And then, and then once it happens, everyone's like, oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm supposed to slow down and take my time. You know, and that's the reason why there's Carmageddon. And that's the reason why if your car was on the interstate Thursday morning because you got into an accident, head over to Kaziski Auto Parts. Get yourself some quality used parts. 51st and I Street in Omaha. And you're going to get yourself anything to get a fixed alternators radiators hoses uh i mean you guys have everything that is underneath those hoods you do fenders body fenders, work too. bumpers doors headlights wheels Listen, this it, time of the year that's the biggest thing is the wheels the wheels they, yeah yeah they slide into curbs a lot yeah, yeah. batteries oh, I've batteries curb checked ba- you are so in love with those batteries <laughs> you know i'll tell you i i feel bad because i i watch some of these people that will go out and buy a brand new wheel now we spin balance every wheel you know what's wrong with buying a nice aluminum wheel for 85 to 150 dollars in most cases and they're out paying 350 at the dealer because they want a new one while the rest of them on their car was used and if they wasn't hit as long as they're spin balanced yeah it doesn't make a difference it's all ready to go so and when you're talking about wheels you're talking about the rims themselves i'm talking about the aluminum rim or the steel rim yes you know what was interesting is that as i'm traveling back and forth for every 10 vehicles sitting in the ditch it is really shocking how many of them are like your your four-wheel drive fords and chevy pickups that's because them was the only people that was out thinking that they could get out and get around. <laughs> and really, I've, it took the right driver to get whatever vehicle you I've had around. days like that where I'll just, I'll hop in the Ranger and I'll throw on my coveralls and I'll take a big old tow rope with me and I'll drive around and start pulling people out. You and pull I mean, people out with that All the thing? time. All the time. Uh, something we meant to get to last week and, and, and we just didn't was uh, you guys did the uh, present wrapping and uh, delivery of all the presents to Children's Hospital yep, for, for the holiday horsepower drive. Yep. How did that, how'd that go? You were there. It was well, actually, I wasn't there for the. Well, delivery. you were there for the wrapping. We we had a record number of stuff come in every year. We have stuff uh, on that Saturday morning that shows up right at the last minute, and you were there for the wrapping. And there yep. was just, I don't know how long that that 
those well, that tables, tables were probably it was the length of the uh, the the waiting area at Joe's. Oh, it, it was, was huge. About ten feet from the front desk to about ten feet from the uh, entrance. So to the probably pit, so. 60, 60 foot yeah. long, probably. Yeah. And it was just you know, and there wasn't like no spaces. I mean, it was just jam packed full of stuff. But then it was we t-shirts, went t-shirts, decals, oh, you uh, name it. It crayons, was teddy bears. Uh, Kaziski Auto Parts donated the uh, the boxes. Uh, you know, so we owe a huge uh, thanks to them. Uh, Lee Ackerman from IE Speedway. Uh, he had a bunch of the uh, the decals. Uh, the kids went nuts over. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, I was kind of wanting to grab one of those. Well, what happened is that when we're giving out, no, we don't have nothing left. Dang it. First of all, you're too old for that. So <laughs> no. anyways, they're taking these decals, really Joe, and they're putting them on their defibrillators and their heart machines, and the nurses are like, oh my God, you know that's going to be a bear to <laughs> rip those off. So, yeah. so, some of them decals you can't hardly get back on. No, yeah. no, they're not. They're not <laughs> I don't know what kind of glue they're well, using on the back. One thing it, I was wondering all Saturday, Sunday afternoon when I was sitting at home trying to nurse my cold was... Uh, you had jumped in in the wrapping process. Once we got all the bags packed, uh, all the boxes packed up and ready to go, there was about 50 boxes that needed wrapped. And so, Bud, being the ever cheap ass that he is, uh, you know, whenever you're wrapping presents, you've always got that length of wrapping paper that just won't go on anything. Bud just throws it on a box and starts <laughs> getting all these. There's probably about 10 or 15 sheets of this. So he just makes this Frankenstein wrapping of a present. And what I want to know is, did that kid cry that got one of those Frankenstein wrappings? No, actually, it was kind of <laughs> funny. The, the Holiday Horsepower Drive. What's uh, 2013? Have you guys started working on it or are you, you kind of taking a break the, right uh, now? The Racing with the Stars, uh, that's usually kind of the informal kickoff to the holiday horsepower drives christmas season that'll be the uh, first sunday in november back over at joe's karting and then it'll be the first saturday before christmas i don't have that date in front of me uh, i think s- christmas next year 2013 is on a wednesday so it won't be that immediate saturday before because that's a big travel weekend right. so it'll be the saturday before that if Same you deal. uh if you want to get involved in the holiday horsepower drive get online holidayhorsepowerdrive.com you can yep. contact buddy at joe's karting uh but we'll we'll be talking about on the front stretch nonetheless uh and getting you guys up to date you know, with that. Was, and, and listen feel free people to not get involved in holiday horsepower drive again this year in 2013 because i got an autographed silver dollar nationals helmet from the starting lineup uh i, I didn't pay half i didn't even pay a quarter as much as i was ready to pay or thinking I was going to have to pay, but hey, listen, you don't show up and bid on it, you don't get it. It's sitting in my living room, proud as hell. I got Scott Bloomquist's autograph on there. I got Jimmy, uh, was Jimmy, no, Jimmy Owens. Jimmy Owens. Yeah, I got his on, I mean, Brian yeah, Burkhoff. You know I don't even, listen, me, listen, it's pissing you off because I don't know half the guys that are on there, but. No, to me, the biggest <laughs> name on that helmet, honestly, the biggest name on that helmet is not Bloomquist. It's not Burkhoffer. It's it's your dad, Bob Kaziski. I mean, seriously, if you're a true racing aficionado and you like to follow racing, whether it be dirt or asphalt, what better helmet to have than Bob Kaziski, a former Daytona 500 driver and a, a former dirt track champion? I mean, he's covered everything there is in racing and then some. A true, a true legend and somebody that we are going to have on in a couple of weeks as a part of our Dirt Track Roundtable. I don't want to say too much about it because we're still finalizing the details, but uh, that's going to be interesting to see that, that show uh, coming up. Probably in about a month, month and a half. Well, I have talked to all three of them now for that round table, and yeah. they've all three agreed to do it. Now, so. so now the, the, the ball's back in my court to actually make this happen, huh? That's right, because I've talked to all three of them. I've, I've located them and got all three of them on the phone. Now I came up with the idea. i got to actually follow through and make it happen. Uh, we're running out of time for turn one. We're going to come back in turn two, talk about some of the schedules that have been released for local dirt tracks, talk about the Silver Dollar Nationals happenings at I-80. And then in turns three and four, we're going to talk with Todd Staley, the president and creator of the USMTS series, and I say that it's redundant, the United States Touring Modified Series. Talk to him about how it got started, all the different great stuff that happens with the USMTS, and uh, you're not going to want to miss that interview as a part of the Legends of the Dirt that's coming up in turns three and four, but in the meantime, let's get over to turn two. We'll be right back here on the Front Stretch, presented by Kozinski Auto Parts, 51st and I Street in Omaha. It's AM 590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. The Silver Dollar Nationals are returning to I-80 Speedway on July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Don't miss the nation's top USMTS, MLRA, and Lucas Oil dirt late model racers as they compete at Nebraska's fastest track. Come watch the nation's best dirt track racers compete for a $27,000 to win payout. Ticket prices and packages at 402-342-3453. 
The third annual Silver Dollar Nationals at I-80 Speedway, July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Kosiski Auto Parts is the Metro's premier auto parts store. Located at 50th and I Street, Kosiski Auto Parts will help you find the replacement part you need to get back on the road. Give one of their experienced salespeople a call today at 731-4592. Let Kosiski Auto Parts and Team PRP find your quality used replacement parts. Kosiski Auto Parts offers warranties on all parts that leave their store so you have peace of mind. Open Monday to Friday, 8 to 5.30 or 24 hours a day at Kosiski.com. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. This is the Front Stretch on AM590, powered by Kosiski Auto Parts. Quality used parts at an affordable price. Now, back to the Front Stretch. Welcome back to the Front Stretch, presented by Kosiski Auto Parts, 51st and I Street in Omaha. Now, you can also get some information online, kosiski.com, but the best way to give is to give them a call. Uh, What's that number again, Joe? 402-731-4592. 402-731-4592. Joe, a lot of happening in the Dirt Series, even though it's in the off season and, and it is a holiday season, but uh, I know that uh, Lee Ackerman blew up my email address today, uh, sending me all the different schedules for the SLM, SLMR, uh, Raceway Park, I-80s is out, uh, information about the Silver Dollar Nationals 2013 is out, which let's talk about the Silver Dollar Nationals in 2013. Any major changes you're going to do? Are you going to kind of, I mean, you've got a system that's working, I I know the fans. I was in the stands uh, this year for it, my first Silver Dollar Nationals, and uh, I, I didn't hear anything but great, great reviews from how the track was uh, was prepared. You guys did a great job at the track. It was great racing, uh, and some of the great drivers that came out this year for it. So any changes this year? We've got a couple little changes this year for the Silver Dollar Nationals. Uh, nothing that's going to make it just a little better for the drivers, a little better for the fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, same two classes, USMTS, which we'll hear Todd Staley talk about right after this. Todd will be back this year, but with the Silver Dollar Nationals, it's going to have the USMTS again. It will be the Lucas Oil late models again, so we're going to have most of the people. But this year, the Belt Bash has really gotten big, and the Belt Bash is going to be the next 20 cars that don't make the race, and it's going to pay 300 to start. So it's going to make some of these guys that say, I don't want to go because I can't make no money for the weekend, they've got to start start we've guaranteed 1500 for second and i don't know if you know the rest of the dirt people but there's a there's a a little blog called the rest of the dirt and if you get on that blog they're taking up a fans fund and they're going to try to get it to be 2700 dollars to win on his blog and if he gets over 2700 he's going to add it to that race also so l belt from l belt custom homes and the belt bash is going to be a bash yeah i mean can you imagine making ten percent of of what the twenty seven thousand to win race is to win the non qualifiers race? No, okay, I mean twenty seven hundred. Is there any regular tracks that pay that? I mean specials and stuff like that. that... Uh, yeah, they'll they'll pay three thousand at most of the specials. Yeah. But I mean that's the non qualifiers, right? You know why would a person yeah. not want to come? So I mean that's going to help get more cars and and cars that'll want to at least come and try. I think it's going to get guys like Billy Moyer, the junior, his son. Last year he said, well, you know I didn't want to go through the effort. I called him after the race. He says, I was was down a little bit. He said, if I didn't make the race, I wouldn't have no money. And I says, well, guess what? I'm going to figure out a way to get past that, and we're going to get it for next year. So I wonder if we can get Kelly Bowen to come down for the Silver Dollar Nationals this year. Oh, good Lord, man, I'd be excited. We're talking to him in a couple of weeks, and uh, I I have a funny feeling that you've got some strings you can pull with him. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. We'll we'll talk to him in a couple of weeks as a part of the Legends of the Dirt series, so maybe we can get him to come down, and and I can get to see him, and, and it's... I said it before, and I'll say it again. It's my goal to get you in back into a late model. I gotta see Joe Kaziski race. I gotta see it. I, even if even if you, I end up seeing you in one of the uh, the bathtub races at Joe's Karting, <laughs> I'd love to see you race just once. You know, I do want to. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm picturing him in one of the bathtubs. Sponsored by Lando Lakes Butter. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody take over. <laughs> you know the one. The one thing I do want to mention, though, Joe, is your schedule this year. My God, if you're a fan of racing, 
what is there not to like at IED Speedway this year? I think you've got everything and then some on the schedule. I've already talked to promoters who are like, how in the hell is he pulling that off? I mean, you've got you got fellow competitor promoters scratching their head going, how the hell did he pull that off? I mean, they're they're speechless. Well, uh, bud, you know something that I that I've always felt in the in the real world is if you're going to make people will go to something that's good and something that's big, and I'm trying to make it as big as I can. I want to make it for the fan the best experience to be at I-80 Speedway for every race they can. And that's kind of what my plan is on this. And, you know, the guy can say, well, I'll miss Friday night or I'll miss Saturday night or I'll miss Sunday night going to a track, but I want him to come to I-80 Speedway every night because we're trying to make the best race and we can to be there every night. If you want to watch the Outlaws, they have it. World, world of Outlaws, about, bud. Not just world the Outlaws, outlaws. World yeah. of Outlaws. If you, if you want to see the World of Outlaws sprint cars, they have it. Yeah, that's you want June, to go see, uh, Sunday, June 9th. You want to go see the USMTS? Well, they've got it. Well, that's a Sunday show. We got a Sunday show. The World show. of Outlaws. We got a Sunday show for the USMTS in August also. I got a, I got a funny feeling says I'm going to put a little effort into maybe getting an interview that Sunday morning, maybe coming down to I-80 and doing some live if stuff. You want to see Scott Bloomquist, Billy Moyer, maybe Kelly Bowen? You've got it. I mean, yeah. what more could you ask for from a dirt track? I well, mean, you have anything and everything. Let's take a look at this quick schedule. On top of the fact that you're going to do your na- uh, your weekly NASCAR races, uh, you've got spring meltdown is what you kick off kick off uh, the season with April 5th and 6th, MLRA and the CBC ASCS Midwest Sprints uh, and the non-sanctioned B mods on Friday night and then uh, A mods on Saturday night. That's a big race. That, the spring melt. That that's actually my very first uh, dirt track race. Last and year's I remember, spring meltdown. Yeah, I remember. You, and I, I really do appreciate you doing this. You pulled me aside and you got me r- right up close. You go, keep your head on a swivel because these sons of bitches come around that corner and they'll knock your ass off. <laughs> well, I was I was down running around the pits with Bud, scared the bejesus out of me. But it, I. I you're absolutely right. I'd have gotten run over if you hadn't have done that. <laughs> you know that I, you know, there's not a bad spot at ID whatsoever. Whether you're in the stands or in the pits, there's not a bad spot in the house. But boy, my favorite spot that oh, just means that a little bit more, a bit more to me is coming off turn four right there where the tow trucks are. You stand right behind the guardrail right there, and you know you watch Joe Kaziski come two foot off the guardrail. He's he's taking the green flag. I don't know how many visitors I've taken down there. I'm like, okay, lady, just stand here. Watch what they're going to do. Oh boy, certain. Uh, well, I can't say it because of radio waves, but yeah, let's, uh, let's let's keep it clean. You know, it's I'm keeping it clean, but man, that is an exciting spot. But that spring meltdown. Here's what happens: we don't see too many races in the spring, so this spring meltdown. This is a big race, and here's why: because we're locked up for six, seven months. We got cabin fever. We want to go fast, and we want to go fast now. Yeah. So. If you really want to make a name for yourself in this sport, ID Speedway, that spring meltdown, that's the race to, to make a statement. The next weekend, you get the Bug Eater Bash. Uh, is that something new, or is that something that's coming back? That, that's something that's uh, – we, we started it a year ago, and it never got a chance to make it off. It got rained out the second mm. day. But this year, I think uh, Wait, I think it'll be really good. It rained this year? In April. Oh, yeah. yeah in Last April. year in April. <laughs> I, you know, it might not have been rain. I think it did snow, maybe. I don't remember if it was rain or snow, but it did do something. I was actually in... Uh in Denver that weekend, and I remember my brother stayed back here in order to get the track prepared. We had rain or snow. I, I don't think it was snow because I just heard something uh, last weekend when I was out uh, working another charity event that it had been 250 some odd days since it last snowed, and that was uh, that had been last Saturday that I heard that. So obviously Wednesday took that away, but uh, well, I think trying to do the math out, in my head is that two fi- April 250? That'd have been about that, April 14th because you got three. 365, you got 365, right? I mean, you know, yep. so that'd be about 100 days into the year, and you take your first three months, and no, now February's you're, now a you're doing short, all so. sorts of this smart math stuff. Uh, <laughs> May, you've got the ASCS National Sprint Car uh, Series again. Uh, do you know if uh, is, is that's a national race? That's not a Midwest race. That's okay, a that's Midwest. Race. It, would uh, will Jack Dover be racing that? Jack Dover will race all of the ASCS races, and I expect Jack Dover to be at the World Outlaw Show this year also. Yeah. Well, That'd you heard about Jack Dover. Jack Dover signed on. He's doing six races in ARCA this year. Oh, really? He got that signed? Yes, he is. How did he, we not know about that? I've known about it for about a week. You're supposed to be on this stuff with the dirt track news. I thought everybody knew it. No. Well, dee, 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 you're, dee, the, dee, you're dee, the next. Breaking you're the news. news. <laughs> Jack Dover doing the ARCA race of six Awesome. Home. We'll have to talk to him uh, when, uh, when the uh, season gets kicked off again and get an update with that. Uh, then the Alphabet uh, Soup Race. How long have you guys been doing that? 
Uh, oh, that good actually, Lord. That, comes... that actually come from the Sunset Speedway days, right? In the end of yeah. sun. Uh, and then when we purchased the track, we just carried it on. So I'm going to tell you, it's probably in its 14th year, maybe third. Okay. I, I don't even know. I, I you know, the, I'll tell you what, there's people that follow that stuff a lot tighter than I do. Gosh, you know what? I even skipped it. That The Alphabet Soup is uh, Friday, June 28th, but uh, the big race, uh, SLS Promotions, is going to present World of Outlaws, the Sprint Cars. I'll have to look at the NASCAR schedule, but you kind of wonder if maybe Tony won't make an appearance. He made an appearance at both World of Outlaws that came up to up here last year, uh, so maybe he'll make one again. That'd be pretty awesome to That'd see. That'd be real neat. Yeah. And I tell you, I, I give the guy a lot of credit I, for as as a brave as abrasive as he is with the media and some of the other drivers. He is the nicest guy when it comes to fans. This is coming from a Tony Stewart fan, so I fully anticipated and never even get to shake his hand. And he was humble, he was graceful, he was great, and he was he was awesome with the fans. So that'd be a treat to see him down at I eighty next year. I'll tell you what, if you ever want to see something that's really fast, really fast, fast race cars, and World Outlaw Sprinters running the four ten motors, you know the three sixty are fast enough yeah. that, that they give you that shiver and them goosebumps, you know, because I'm still a racer at heart. I mean, I love it. I mean, I, I'm sitting here talking to you and I'm getting goosebumps on my arms, but <laughs> if you go out and watch the World Outlaws going down them straightaways with that 410 cubic Are they going to have the 410s at, oh, at yeah. I? Oh, yeah. World good, Outlaws it's, it's are all the 410s. Yeah, the, the, I mean, mile per hour, if you had to guess, mile per hour, straightaway, ID Speedway. I, I'm going to tell you, I'll bet, they're, I'll bet they're awful close, if not over 120-something. Wow. 120, 130-something, yeah. right in that ballpark. Okay, big question, because I'm there every... Big I don't question. Ever, Here we go. I don't ever miss this race at I-80 Speedway. The classic. Is it in October again? Yes, it is. Oh, good Lord. And Dan here, still a, a classic virgin. <laughs> no. uh, I'm not a Cornhusker classic virgin. I've been there. I went this year. I don't remember you being there. I was there. <laughs> I remember I was there this year, but I got sick and had to leave. I remember. Yeah. yeah. Bud it was, got no, sick. I was, Bud got sick. Bud got sick. I was got legitimately blue- sick. I actually had to leave. Mm-hmm. I, I I think he got a little scared. Said he was sick. <laughs> Dear Lord. No, I, I sat in the cheap seats with the fans. A buddy and I went, and uh, I think I took down about 12 hot chocolates that night. It was a little chilly that night, but uh, Charlie Clark Memorial, May twenty sixth. I'm kind of jumping all over the schedule. Best way to get this to go. Best way to get this though. I dash eighty speedway You guys have got it posted, right? Yes, we okay. do. Talk yeah, about the Charlie Char- Clark Memorial. Yeah, that Charlie Clark. Why don't you give us a little heads up? I read hey, a little something something about this today. That Charlie. That Charlie Clark's going to be one of the fan friendliest races of the year. The A mods get to come, and they're going to pay two thousand and twenty two dollars to win. And it's going to. They're going to run forty four laps all together. 22 laps will run. It'll pay a complete purse with 2,022 to win. It's got, I don't remember if it's 3 minutes and 22 seconds or 5 minutes and 22 second pit stop on the front stretch. Then 22 cars will be inverted, and they'll go back and race for another 2,022 to win. Who won it last year? Was that Kyle Burke? Nope. Kyle didn't have his car ready last Luke year. Luke Wanniger. Did he oh. win the Charlie? Luke Wanniger. Yeah, Luke Wanniger won the Charlie Clark. Yep. Yes, he did. That uh, Charlie Clark Memorial, May 26th. We're kind of running out of time here, so I'll breeze through the schedule real quickly. Again, the World of Outlaws, June 9th. Alphabet Soup, June 28th. In July, on the 18th, you got the SLMR and CDM uh, Nebraska 360 and, and more sprint car races. Silver Dollar National Practice will be that night. That's on Thursday night. Then on Friday the 19th is round one of the Silver Dollar Nationals. Saturday the 20th is going to be the finals. That's going to be the big night, the big payout. 27000 to, to win this year. I thought it was really cool. You did two big old bags of silver dollar nickels. Oh, yeah. No, silver no. dollar nickels. Silver dollar nickels. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Listen, I, I said it last week. I checked out a couple of weeks ago. I've been on Christmas break for a while, and it's starting to show. September 20th and 21st, that's the Midwest Fall Brawl. And then October 11th, 12th, and 13th, that's the Cornhusker Classic. Get it all online, i-80speedway.com. And uh, we've kind of run out of time. We had a, we had talked about, we want to talk about some of these other series, the SLMR series, some of the other series that have released their schedules. So we'll cover that next weekend as we wrap up 2012 and start talking about more. More about 2013. We hope you enjoyed it. Just around the corner, Todd Staley, president and creator of the USMTS series as a part of the Legends of the Dirt Track. This is The Front Stretch on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. 
Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. We have all been there before. Broken car part in your hand and some snot-nosed punk behind the counter has no idea what he's talking about, but he guarantees that this part will fix your car. You pay an arm and a leg for the replacement, get it home, and sure enough, it doesn't fit your car. Now, learn from your mistake and give an experienced salesperson at Kasiski Auto Parts a call today at R02-342-3453. Kasiski Auto Parts will get you back on the road with your arms and legs still attached. The Silver Dollar Nationals are returning to I-80 Speedway on July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Don't miss the nation's top USMTS, MLRA, and Lucas Oil dirt late model racers as they compete at Nebraska's fastest track. Come watch the nation's best dirt track racers compete for a $27,000 to win payout. Ticket prices and packages at 402-342-3453. The third annual Silver Dollar Nationals at I-80 Speedway, July 18th, 19th, and 20th. You're listening to The Front Stretch on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Brought to you by Kosiski Auto Parts and Team PRP. Premium recycled parts at an affordable price. Welcome back to The Front Stretch, presented by Kaziski Auto Parts, 51st and I Street in Omaha, online at kaziski.com. And we're continuing our Legends of the Dirt series, talking with Todd Staley, the president of USMTS. Todd, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Glad to be here. Todd, let's get uh, started with the beginning, as we always do, the easiest place to get started. Talk about how you got involved in the sport and in the creation of USMTS. Well, basically, um, I've, I've been around racing since I was about six years old. We used to live by the Hamilton County Speedway in Webster City, Iowa. And uh, so I was going out there as a young kid, picking up rocks and picking up all kinds of garbage. And then just kept working up the ladder and was flagging races for Howard Mellinger, going all over. And then the USMS series uh, contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in flagging for them and did some of those races. And then... Uh, the final year of USMS, 1998, they uh, didn't really know what was going to happen, but I told all the drivers at the beginning of the year, I'm not sure what's going on here, but can't guarantee a point funds or anything like that. And then they ended up going bankrupt. So we put a T in the middle of that and uh, started started the USMTS in 1999 and uh, started off with about 19 races and no sponsors and just went and did it. And first four years was pretty tough on us. Lost a lot of money and uh, really wasn't sure if we wanted to keep it going or not. And then we just uh, kept pecking away. And finally about, oh, I'd say 2005, my wife and I just said, okay, if we're going to do this. We need to do it right. And ever since then, we've just been going very strong. So it's uh, it's been quite a deal. Now we're heading into our 15th year of business and uh, we've built a really good series. Got a lot of good travelers and uh, enjoyed a lot. Talk about what all goes into building this. I mean, to, to be the, the president of a series, to be the creator of it, and, and you're the one that's involved with everything, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not just throwing a couple of races together and calling it good. Talk about what goes on during the, uh, the well, let's, since we're in the off season, let's talk about what goes on during the off season. What you, what you have to do for the series. Um, that's what's funny is everybody always comes to us and says that the the off season is like the is like the, the got to be the best thing for you because you're you're not out doing your traveling and all that stuff and it's like no really the off season is the worst part because you're scheduling races, working on sponsors, and going to trade shows. And I mean, we work harder in the off season than we do in the than we do during during the season, working on souvenirs, getting all of our products, sponsors, just everything. And um, so, I mean, it's 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 a very time consuming time of the year. And I mean, when we were booking 19 races, it wasn't nearly as big a deal. But now that we're booking, uh, I mean, we book about 70, 80 races a year, and and then we're working on sponsors for those races, working on flyers, working on posters. And uh, it just seems like it never, never stops. And then, of course, we got to do all of our taxes, and you got two thousand racers <laughs> that race in the series that we have and stuff. So it's, uh, it just never ends. Hey, Todd, um, how many states have you raced in in your series since the inception? Oh, probably about seventeen. I'm guessing for between fifteen and seventeen. I'm guessing uh, we've been in Mississippi. We had a, we've only had one race in Mississippi and Texas, and everywhere up north, uh, Texas. 
and everywhere north from Texas and Mississippi, so uh, Louisiana, and uh, just kept going north. We've been out to Illinois. That's pretty much the farthest uh, that we've been out east, and and then Nebraska is pretty much the furthest west we've ever been. Uh, we've had tracks calling us in Michigan this year, and we've had tracks uh, Oregon, Ohio, West Virginia. They've all been calling this year. Uh, the Dirt Nights program that came out <clears throat> a couple years ago really got us on the national scene a little bit more, and, and people called wanting us to uh, do more of those races. But uh, it's, it's a little bit tougher on our deal because the tire rule, wherever you go, they got the UMP tires, and then UMP tires are pretty good race tires, and we don't want to make our racers have to purchase a bunch of tires to go compete. So, What's like that racetrack that you get prepped up for that you just can't wait to go to? I mean, like my favorite track, it's probably Wheatland, Missouri. I love just if, – if I find out we got a race on the schedule, I just love going there just because of the atmosphere. What's a racetrack where you got on the schedule and you just go, man, I cannot wait to get to that track because I love the atmosphere, I love the track, I just love being at that racetrack? Well, Wheatland is definitely definitely one of those tracks. Uh, I mean, a beautiful facility. The biggest thing that we have with us is, I mean, when we go to races, we have probably 40 different drivers that can win on any given night. So, I mean, every race is pretty, actually pretty awesome. Um, I mean, Humboldt, Kansas, they've done an awesome job with their racetrack down there. Um, and then, of course, last the last couple of years, we've been doing some specials. Uh, we joined with, with uh, I-80 Speedway, and, and we come there with the Lucas Oil Weight model. We go up to with the World Outlaws up in uh, at Deer Creek. We've been with the uh, the, the Hell Tour. Um, it's been for uh, UNP last couple of years up at Cedar Lake. So, I mean, we've been getting around a lot more with the late model drivers. And actually, Tim out the World of Outlaws told me last weekend, he's like, oh, we need to put on about 10 of these shows next year together because it's such a good show. And <laughs> so, I mean, all the races we pretty much go to, I really don't have one exact favorite. It's just most of the races are all pretty good. So, we're just excited to go to most of them. That's fair enough. Todd, you know, one, I want to back up a little bit here. You were talking about, you know, you're booking 70 to 80 uh, race dates around the nation here, and you're getting calls from Oregon and Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, states that you don't, you, you've you never even been to. And I look at history as a whole in the last 10 years, and we've seen not, thank God, not around here. But I remember back in 2005, we went to Blackbird Bend Speedway. I took my dad to a USMTS race, and he, he just thought it was one of the, the coolest modified races you could ever go to. Now we're, you know, we're rabid USMTS fans. But with that being said, what do you think you lend your success to with the USMTS when, when you see tracks closing up, car counts are going across certain parts of the U.S., and here's the USMTS going from starting with 19 races in one year to now having 80 races a year, starting with 19 drivers. Now you, you just mentioned you had over 2,000 drivers. W- w- where do you think you lend your success to with that? Oh, I mean, just <clears throat> probably just being consistent with our rules. Um, once again, having a great series with great drivers. I mean, that's that's the biggest part of it. And then one thing that, that we, we really, I mean, if we go to a race and we have 150 fans or 200 fans like we did when we first started, I mean, one thing that we have never done in, in the entire 15 years is ever cut a purse. And and that's one thing. I mean, when the racers come to the track, they know they're getting paid this much money. And then we've just grown from that part. And, I mean, just the loyalty that we've, that we've had with our drivers and then the loyalty that they give back to us has been the, been the biggest part of it. And then, like I said, the Dirt Nights program coming on TV two years ago, um, everybody got to see the other side of it. And, like I said, the racing is second to none. And when you put all these good drivers together, it's just uh, absolutely awesome. This is the Front Stretch on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio, continuing our conversation with Todd Staley, president of the United States Touring Modified Series. I don't I don't know, and I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but I guess I do in a, in a kind of in a way here, Todd. Uh, I know you and Mike Spaulding, USMTS driver, had worked on the Dirt Nights. Number one question out there with the USMTS fans, uh, it's died down some, but it's a big question. Will Dirt Nights ever make its return to national TV? Yeah, I didn't have much. I mean, they, they put it together. They did, uh, Mike Spaulding and Corey Drips kind of put it together, and then they got some um, investors to back it up to help back pay for it. But it was a it was a $2 million program. They went to the best producers, and they went to the best production crew and just everything. And, I mean, it, it cost over $2 million. And, and I told them when the thing started, I said, now remember, you're going to have to make this three years before you're going to see any kind of return. And and the investors are pretty much, well, we're going to be one and done then because we're not going to stick a whole bunch of money back into this thing. And it's, uh, I mean, they were looking at some different um, avenues on um, on, t- on channels, uh, TV channels to be on or uh, networks to be on to get their costs down a little bit. And, I mean, I'm pretty sure we're probably done with the dirt night in, in my guess. 
unless something drastically happens here in the near future. But uh, do you it feel was two years ago? So I, you, I doubt it. Do you feel like the impending news that Speed is eventually going to be changed into Fox Sports has reduced the chances of that, or or is that something that kind of well, that's just another thing that is making it difficult to bring it back? Well, I mean that that could help because I know they talked about it last year that they were going to do it again and they were going to go through Fox Sports. Um, so, I mean, the chances are always there, but uh, they definitely need some investors to come in and, and make it happen. Todd, have they, has anybody talked to uh, Forrest Lucas and his TV show, uh, you know, his TV station, that MAV TV? Uh, he's trying to get it more into just speed racing stuff. I know this next year or coming up as Fox Sports takes over speed. Um, it might be something for him to look into there also with Forrest Lucas. Yep, I'm, I'm, I mean, we were, we've been working with uh, Lucas to get a sponsorship, and uh, actually we just found out today that we're probably going to be putting on uh, two more races with the Lucas deal coming up. Uh, hopefully we'll get announced them this week yet, uh, uh, right before the I-80 Silver Dollar National. So I don't know. It's, it's, all, it's all in the works. And, um, I mean, the guys know about the, the, the math TV thing, and, and I know that uh, Forrest has his own production deal and everything. So, I mean, that's all in their hands. Like I said, I was, I was just lucky enough to be a part of it. They, used, they did all the taping at our races, so that was pretty cool. Well, well, one of the things that, you know, makes me think of you as a legend is when I uh, walk out of the racetrack as being one of the owners of I-80 Speedway, and I, I hear the people as they're walking out from the Silver Dollar Nationals, and they're going, I came here to watch the Lucas Oil Cars, and after I got here, I don't know which race was better, but it was so good putting the two together, I will be back, you know. Uh, that makes me think that you've put together something that's legendary enough to be one of the legends on our radio show. And as we talk to you about, you know, all the legends that's going to be there, We, I know that we booked another show with the USMTS again this year. We were booked for August Sunday night, August 11th, to have you come back after the Silver Dollar Nationals that's in July. And... I think it's probably one of the greatest shows on dirt to watch the USMTS Modifieds. Them guys are real racers. They are real good. And me, from being from uh, late models like I am, you would think I wouldn't know the difference. But I'll tell you what, that is some good racing. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's what I said. That's what, the, that's what the cool part about our whole deal is, is that, I mean, we have 30 to 40 good drivers. And, uh, I mean, we do our fall jamboree up at Deer Creek, and, and all the time these people coming up there, and they're like, you know what I like about you guys the best? And it's like, What's that? And they're like, the car will come right up to your door and not touch you. Or we race from, I mean, you're getting your door taken off and all that kind of stuff. And and, and then that's the thing that I really like about our drivers. They're going to race you how you race them. And, and for the most part, everybody's pretty clean and does a good job. And I know where we where we have our trailer during the Silver Dollar Nationals, we get a lot of uh, people walking out after the races. And people are pretty impressed with us. They, they all stop by and shake our hands and say, Pretty impressive to see a modified show like that, and that always makes you put a smile on your face. I think the racetrack is is part of that show, though, isn't it, Todd? The good racetrack, nice, big, and wide, makes them race good. Side by side racing, they give it a little more room, or is that just because they're that good at drivers? No, both. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it fits the total package. I, I mean, you guys do an awesome job with the racetrack, and I mean, if we went to a racetrack that was rough and and nobody wanted to race on it, everybody'd be tearing up their equipment. And I mean, that's that's a whole part of the whole show that turns a race into an event. And uh, I, I just think that what you guys have started started over there is going to turn out to be a great thing when it's all done. How involved are you when when you decide uh, to to take it to another track? When one of these you talked about some of the states that were calling you to come and race. Is it something that you just think, okay, well let's try going to Ohio or let's try going to this state, or is Oregon. that something you do a bunch of research and you 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 really dig into it to find out is this going to be a good track for our modified series? No, not really. Um, it used to be that we used to take every racetrack that we'd get, but now we can kind of be a little bit pickier and and kind of decide where we want to go. Like I said, the biggest thing with like the Ohio area and that stuff is the tire stuff is all different than what we're on. We don't want to make our di- guys buy tires, and we don't want to make them have to buy tires. So it's just easier just to say no, not this year. But if we could get like a, and then then the other thing is we got to look at mileage. How, how much is it going to cost for everybody to go out there? We don't want everyone to go out there and have to spend per se four thousand dollars to get there and back and all their entries and all that. I mean, we look after the racers a little bit too. It's not all about. USMTS going out there and just taking the money and, and running back. But we do try to get in a different areas so that we can get different fans involved and hopefully they'll come and see other races in other areas. Do you have any uh, big surprises on tap for 2013? Maybe something you're going to tweak or change within the schedule, the rules that you want to maybe do a hint at? 
Um, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, we uh, we're actually we're uh, we just got back from the IMIS show out in Indianapolis, and all my drivers were bummed because last year we had a thirty race championship series that was paid four thousand to win, and we kind of kind of eliminated that program. One reason being that there were several tracks that didn't make some money, and there were some tracks that that. Uh, didn't uh we were lacking cars so we just kind of scrapped that and went back to our three regions and a hunt and then of course uh our contracts were up with about five of our big sponsors this year so it, <laughs> that kind of put a little kibosh on it too so we're trying to renew all of our sponsorship programs for next year and, and now we'll start adding some money we know we're, we know the races that do good and we're adding some money to those purses and and we'll have some five thousand win shows and then we're going to do like five big specials throughout the year some tens fifteens and maybe twenty 20,000 wind shows, so that's pretty much all I can say right now. There's one driver in the USMTS series. You might have heard of him. He's won a couple races. The Reaper, Ryan Gustin. Now, everybody knows that Ryan Gustin, Kelly Shyrock, Mike Donlinger, Corey Drips, Al Hain. I mean, these are some of the, the names. They're legends within the USMTS, and they've been with you for a number of years. And I, I do like asking a lot of the track owners and promoters, if I was to come out with the USMTS car, not that I would, but because I can't afford it, but if, if I came out, Todd, who do you think is a up-and-comer that people should be on the watch for here say in the next five years well we actually i mean gustin he's only 22 years old that kid's gonna win a lot of races and now he's got himself a late model just to play with when we're not racing um but you got gustin and you got rodney sanders uh he's gonna be driving a mars late model a little bit next year uh loves racing modified just loves racing in a hole and then of course you got the scott brothers johnny and stormy scott uh very very good good drivers and then we have this upcomer uh trevor hunt he's 13 years old and be 14 next year he raced in our b-mod iron man series last year or this past year and he won that deal and they bought him an a-mod at the end of the year and and uh, up at our jamboree he was racing uh, a b-man with jeremy Payne, who won our last three races and uh trevor passed jeremy and got in got himself into the a-man so i thought that was pretty cool so but he's a 13 year old 14 year old that's going to be an up-and-coming driver that everybody needs to keep their eye on so besides our legends i mean we got shyrock like you said and hughes and don Langer and tommy meyer is going to be back racing some more next year um, like I said, it's just going to be another awesome year. We'll be right back as we continue our conversation with Todd Staley, president and creator of the USMTS as a part of the Legends of the Dirt series. This is the Front Stretch on AM590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Kasiski Auto Parts is the Metro's premier auto parts store. Located at 50th and I Street, Kasiski Auto Parts will help you find the replacement part you need to get back on the road. Give one of their experienced salespeople a call today at 731-4592. Let Kasiski Auto Parts and Team PR RP find your quality used replacement parts. Kasiski Auto Parts offers warranties on all parts that leave their store so you have peace of mind. Open Monday to Friday, 8 to 5.30 or 24 hours a day at Kasiski.com. The Silver Dollar Nationals are returning to I-80 Speedway on July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Don't miss the nation's top USMTS, MLRA, and Lucas Oil dirt late model racers as they compete at Nebraska's fastest track. Come watch the nation's best dirt track racers compete for a $27,000 to win payout. Ticket prices and packages at 402-342-3453. The third annual Silver Dollar Nationals at I-80 Speedway, July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. This is the Front Stretch on AM590, powered by Kosiski Auto Parts. Quality used parts at an affordable price. Now, back to the Front Stretch. Welcome back to the Front Stretch, presented by Kaziski Auto Parts, 51st and I Street. It's where you go to get quality used parts at an affordable price, where you can pick up just about anything for your car with a full lifetime warranty. We're continuing our Legends of the Dirt series, talking with Todd Staley, president of the USMTS. Todd, 
How much have you had to tweak the rules over the years to make sure that drivers aren't getting a competitive advantage and you're keeping the racing interesting for the drive for the fans? <laughs> That's an interesting question, but uh, I mean, we went to a spec head rule about six years ago, and now we got about 800 sets of heads out there, and it seems like that ever since we went to that, Brodex had told me who we do our spec head with. Once we, once they said once we do this, I think it was right before I think Kelly Schrock won. That was the year he won like 13 races in a row and won like 39 races that year. Dave, Dave Rotter at Rodex told me, he said, Todd, you go to this spec head, I'm telling you, you're going to have a bunch of different winners. And I'm just like, how? How's that going to happen? And uh, he said, you, you're you going to slow everybody down. They're going to take away some horsepower and they're going to be a lot, everybody's going to be a lot faster. And that year, I think the next year, I think we had 39 different winners and no one won over five races. And it was like, wow, that was pretty cool. I mean, that was really the only thing that we've even done on the series. Our rules have been pretty much the same ever since then. I mean, the technology and the modified uh, is totally crazy. I mean, when, when these when these car builders, Hughes and Shyrock and those guys all went away from driving for somebody else and started building their own cars, they just, I mean, I know Kelly, he sits under his race car all the time trying to figure out what can I do to make this thing better? And uh, they, they, it's just absolutely amazing. Hey, Todd, what, uh, now back in our area here, there's a lot of IMCA modifieds. And I know when the USMTS comes into town, it seems like we can never get Johnny the Jet, Dylan Smith, and a lot of those guys that are the heroes around here to run with the USMTS. What is the rule change that they have to have? Is their motors completely out? Is there some reason they can't come and race with you? The tire rule's that tough? Or exactly what is it that, that we need to be able to see our local heroes be able to come and race with you when you're here at I-80 Speedway? I think a big part of it is everybody always says that, that they can't compete, that their motors don't compete and all this. And it's not that because a lot of the IMCA type motors, I mean, they're producing 700, 720 horse, 720 horse. I think more of it is, and, and not not breaking on the USMTS drivers or anything, but I think a lot of it is that the guys don't want to come and race because they don't like to, they don't want to get embarrassed on how they race or where they finish. Um, you take the top dog at some racetrack. I mean, I've, I've been to a lot of tracks. I've been to a lot of tracks where the top guy, he comes in and he wins races. But I've also been to a lot of tracks where we go and the top guy doesn't even make the show. So, I mean, it's... I mean, they don't, they feel like they get embarrassed a little bit or what it is, but uh, I mean, we do everything. We've offered bonus money to the local guys to come and race. We've offered discounted entry fees to come and race, and, and most of them, they just don't come, and I can't figure it out. I, I don't know. <laughs> I ask the question all the time. Let me dive a little deeper into that question that Joe at, had asked you. Have you seen in the history of the USMTS, when you're traveling the nation here, Todd, uh, have you seen an IMCA car, you know, maybe put a spoiler on the back, run their, their Hoosier tire? Have you seen them actually make the field or even win a USMTS race? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Mark Dotson was the first one that was the local driver down in Cameron, Missouri that won a race. Uh, I mean, it was a long time ago. But, uh, I mean, Dan Chapman, I use him in my letters that we write all the time talking about Dan Chapman. He's got a flat tappet steel-headed motor. He puts throws a spoiler on. He came up to the Jamboree a couple of years ago, and his goal was to uh, just make the, the main or the non-qualifiers feature the last night. And the first two nights, he made the feature, the A-main feature, where we only take 30 cars. And then the second or the final night, he was in a transfer spot and spun out. And came through and made the non-qualifiers feature that night. So, I mean, yes, they can compete. Like I said, we've tried all kinds of different things to get them to come, and uh, we, we can't figure it out. Well, when, when I see <laughs> it's the hard thing to figure out, right? When I see, uh, you know, and the reason I ask the question is that the tires, or is there more to the chassis? I know that I believe you guys use lift bars, and they don't possibly. Other than that, I sit back and I say, you know, they went to this crate motor at IMCA, and Wanager come in and raced with all them guys with. Uh, basically a 400 horsepower motor compared to some of their six and 700 horsepower motors. So a motor answer is not a good answer as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I believe most of the guys probably know how to put a torque arm on their car or a lift bar on their car if that's what it takes. And I'm trying to figure out how can I tempt or how can I attempt to get some of these guys to want to race uh, with you guys when you come to town? I don't know. I've, I know you and I have talked about this several times and I, I think my locals will be able to race with you guys. I, I would I would put money on Kyle Burke most of the time being able to run a top five with you guys. And, you know, Dylan Smith, I know he could be right there. And I know Johnny the Jet would be right there. Mark Noble, I know he's run with you a number of times and, and uh -oh. been good. So I, I just can't understand why I won't get him when it comes time. But, you know, we need to figure out a way to get those guys here. And if you come up with an answer, please let me know. Oh, 
Oh, I definitely will. And and same same to you if you can figure out what it is because I've been working on it for years trying to get them to come. What uh, what's twenty thirteen? gearing up for you guys uh, I know we talked about there's no big changes coming but uh, uh, anything uh, as far as any any kind of um, I guess we already kind of announced, asked this question didn't we I was trying to hope to find a way to go with it yeah. <laughs> you, you tried to ask the same question Bud asked a little bit ago about what new things we got any new rules I heard Bud say something like that and he said no nope no nope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nothing big. <laughs> Todd, when we asked that question, you said that, you know you you don't really change the rules very often. Is that something you think has been a benefit for you that that you're not changing the rules a lot, so it's easy to come back year after year and race the USMTS? Well, I mean, we just don't want to change our rules because anytime you make changes, it costs money. Um, I mean, whether you take away or add or whatever you do, you're, you're, it's costing the racers money. And, and especially today, I mean, travel, I mean, I'll bet we spent more than $25,000 in our travels this year. And, and then you, the racers have to do that. And I talked to one racer, said, yep, 25000 for fuel, 19000 for pit pass and entry fees throughout the year. And tough to make this deal work. And seven years ago, I think we paid 5000 to win the points. And this year, Gustin's getting a check for $45,000. So we've just... We've come so far, and I mean, it's hard to. Uh, you definitely can't go backwards. <laughs> Did you say forty five thousand dollars? Forty five thousand. Yep. Jeez. I'm going USMTS racing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to win to do that. Uh, you got to beat Ryan he's, Gustin he's, also. He's go to he knows how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about some of your drivers, uh, your your championship series winners, and maybe some of the big, uh, probably the bigger races you had this year, battles between them and that kind of stuff. Can you say that again? Some of the some of your big drivers, and, and maybe there was one or two races. Well, there's probably more than one or two with as many races you guys run, but uh, maybe some of the big races that people miss that they need to come back and make sure and catch next year. Well, definitely our our uh, Silver Dollar Nationals. Uh, we got to, we got to give Joe a plug because that's a, that's like I said that's one of our most awesome events that we do, and then. Uh, we have our 15,000 win King of America race down in Humboldt, Kansas in March. Um, actually, it's going to be a three. We knocked the day off of it this year, so it's going to pay 10,000 to win. We got our uh, World Modified Dirt Track Championship up in Deer Creek this year. We added 15,000 more dollars to the purse um, in all the spots. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're in the F Main or where, but we added money there. And then, of course, our Fall Jamboree at Deer Creek. I mean, we can't talk enough about that. It's a it's a great event that's been going on up there since 2001. And then uh, we're adding some new specials this year. We're going to do a three-day show down in Kansas City, it sounds like, and one in Swine, Oklahoma. Just working hard to keep everything going and keep everybody happy. Todd, we thank you so much for joining us tonight. We took a little bit longer than we expected to, but uh, good conversation and, and best of luck in 2013, and uh, have a great Christmas day. You bet. You guys, too. Thanks so much for your time. Yep, thank you. Todd Staley of the USMTS, president, creator, promoter, everything of the USMTS series. Uh, good little conversation there to get an idea of what USMTS is doing in 2013. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you, when Todd was talking about, you know, in the in the off season. to me it sounds like getting to go to the races and, and help direct and run the races, you know, that's almost like a vacation from the off season when you are busting your butt to, to put the races on and promote the track and whatnot. Well, something I wished we would ask Todd is how much controversy he had in any one of the races, you know, did he ever have a, a challenge in the season? Because we end up that way with the challenge every once in a while through our SLMR series that, uh, you know, you get you get a couple guys that will start challenging the, the race directors, start challenging the series, start challenging each other in the series, you know. And you don't like to see it, but sometimes it happens. And that so that's the only part that's bad about the series. I love going to the series races and being able to talk about – I run the race receivers and, and talk to the drivers, you know, for yellow flags and when they pull yellow flags and, you know, try to help out with that. And really – 99% of the drivers are great to work with. They really respect the series, and I know that Todd has that same thing. That they, But in your off-season, there's a lot of work. There's a lot I of mean, work, and it's a lot of hard work. But here's what I'm getting at. Between developing the schedule, working with the drivers and your tech officials on the rules package, what is the sole number one hardest thing to work on during the off-season? Sponsors. You got to remember, it takes some sponsor money. It you know, it, it takes contingency sponsors. We have to work on that to help keep them drivers uh, coming. Uh, you know, we we have in our SLMR series, it's MelvinBank dot com. Uh, you know, race for the safe championship. You know, and you have to keep all the people coming back. Uh, you know, we got performance bodies, VP Fuels, Bernheisel. They've got some stuff that Bernheisel gift certificates for Sardis and Chassis. Uh, 
action signs. I mean, and you have to keep all them people. And it's not just a phone call because everyone wants to know, well, what did we do last year? You know, who's your tires? I spent, I probably spent uh, six hours at the IMIS show working with Hoosier Tires to try to get them back on for SLMR Series next year. And I know Todd's the same way because, you know, he's sitting over there. He works with McCrary Tires in, in their series. And, you know, you try to it, – it seems like it's simple. Everybody thinks that all these sponsors are just ready to give away five and 10000 and 20000 and 50000 dollars and it's not true. But that's how Todd's going to get $45,000 for a championship. It isn't he, – he doesn't have it to pull out of his pocket. He spent right. that forty five thousand the same as them racers did running up and down the road, and it's not going to be there for him to to do that. All right then, let's. Uh, we'll... <laughs> Me and Dan are over here good, napping. Good news is we can edit. <laughs> uh, so that wraps up the show. That's going to do it for us. Uh, we. Uh... So that I'd like to, I'd like to wish everybody that's listening a merry merry Christmas, and you know spend a lot of time with your family. Yep. Now I, I'm just going to get to the point. Uh, what do you? Uh, what's on your Christmas list, Joe? You know, I really don't have nothing. I asked my wife last night what she wanted for Christmas, and she says, "I've got it all. I got you." And what am I supposed to say? <laughs> you know? And I says, "Well, you know, I got you too, honey. That's all I guess that we need is just the two of us." And you know, you keep thanking your kids, you know, for trying to stay out of trouble and being good, and that's really. Did you all see you, you can sitting do. to your left over here? Yeah, hey, Andrew, you staying out of trouble? He hasn't caused me and mom no trouble. I don't. I really don't. I don't have time to cause trouble that you, anymore. That you know of. <laughs> yeah, Dan, what are you asking for Christmas? Uh, a a, a uh, engine block warmer. An engine block warmer. Yeah. Okay. I asked for an engine block warmer because I've had a remote car starter, and I'm big on saving fuel. I'm huge on saving fuel. And when your car sits out there and idles for five, six, seven minutes, it does. I've Over seen a you tank drive. Of gas, eat away. I've seen you drive. What, yeah. With an engine and fuel, the way you drive, you're gonna have to plug in an engine block warmer, and you're gonna use electricity. No, I got a uh, outside timer, so it kicks on at like three in the morning, and uh, then it, it warms up the engine block for about four or five hours, and it's nice because as soon as you, that truck fires right up, and by the time I'm a mile away from the house, I got hot air blowing out the vents. Uh, they work great. The tough know, he, thing is finding somebody to install them. He probably lives in an apartment, and he's using the apartment electricity. <laughs> is probably what it is, bud. I, actually, I live in a house, I, yeah, but yeah, I, in a house, but it ain't much bigger than an apartment. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I, I do hook it up to my neighbors. <laughs> I'm just w- wishing for race parts. My neighbor's 104. He he kid, that doesn't bother him any. Uh, we do wish you a happy, uh, a merry Christmas, and a great holiday. We'll be back next weekend as we're going to start our roundtable. Uh, we're going to work on these uh, Legends of the Dirt. Series interviews. Bill Martin, Dave Chase, and Bob Kaziski all scheduled to come up next weekend. We hope you join us. Hope you have a happy holidays from all of us here at the Front Stretch. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. This has been the Front Stretch on AM 590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. The Silver Dollar Nationals are returning to I-80 Speedway on July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Don't miss the nation's top USMTS, MLRA, and Lucas Oil dirt late model racers as they compete at Nebraska's fastest track. Come watch the nation's best dirt track racers compete for a $27,000 to win payout. Ticket prices and packages at 402-342-3453. The third annual Silver Dollar Nationals at I-80 Speedway, July 18th, 19th, and 20th. We have all been there before. Broken car part in your hand and some snot-nosed punk behind the counter has no idea what he is talking about, but he guarantees that this part will fix your car. You pay an arm and a leg for the replacement, get it home, and sure enough, it doesn't fit your car. Now, learn from your mistake and give an experienced salesperson at Kasiski Auto Parts. A call today at R02-342-3453. Kasiski Auto Parts will get you back on the road with your arms and legs still attached. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. 